Welcome, friends, to Daily Moments of Inspiration. You know, David of old said this. He said, Give ear to my prayer, O God, and hide not thyself from my supplication. Attend unto me and hear me. I mourn in my complaint and make a noise. I'm reading this because I want to inspire you and I want to encourage you that whatever trial you might be going through, that you might know that God cares for you and God will deliver you the way that he delivered David of old. He said, attend unto me and hear me. I mourn in my complaint and I make noise. And then he said, my heart is sore pained within me. And the tares of death are upon me. Fearfulness and trembling are come upon me. And horror hath overwhelmed me. And I said, Oh, that I had wings like a dove, for then would I fly away and be at rest. Lo, then would I wander far off and remain in the wilderness. I would hasten my escape from the windy storm and tempest. You know, David was a prophet of God. The Bible says that, that he was a prophet, and he spoke many things concerning the coming of Christ, the Messiah, the deliverer of the people. And, and in these Psalms, he was a mightily anointed of God, and he spoke many things by prophetical utterance. And here, here he is, and he appears to be in great despair. And you might be in a time of great despair. You've gone through times of despair. I know you have. Because every Christian has. Because the Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord delivereth him out of them all. And so he was going through fearfulness. He was going through trembling. And there was horror that overwhelmed him. And he says, oh, that I was just like a dove. Then I'd fly away from all my troubles and be at rest. But then, notice how things turned around because David encouraged himself in the Lord and you can encourage yourself in the Lord. And he did it by this, by speaking faith. And though he was in a great trial of affliction, he said this, As for me, I will call upon God and the Lord shall save me. He said, evening and morning and at noon will I pray and cry aloud, and he shall hear my voice. And so you see, though he was in a time of great despair, he says, nevertheless, God is going to hear me. I will call upon God. And he says, I will pray, I will cry aloud, and he shall hear my voice. Then look how that when he spoke words of faith, when he spoke words of that he encouraged himself in the Lord, then look how things turned around. And he says, He hath delivered my soul in peace from the battle that was against me. He hath delivered my soul. And so deliverance comes. When you call upon the Lord, deliverance will come. And he says, he hath delivered my soul in peace. And Jesus Christ is a prince of peace. And the Bible says, great peace he gives unto them that call upon him. From the battle that was against me. We're in a battle. We're in a warfare. But it's not always a warfare against natural things. We think of it as a warfare against natural things. But friend, it's a warfare. It's a spiritual warfare. Because we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and the rulers of the darkness of this world, against wicked spirits that are in high places. And so we see it's a spiritual warfare that we're fighting. And it says... But God delivered my soul in peace from the battle that was against me. For there were many with me. There were many with him. Friends, if you could only look round about, and if you can see the heavenly host of angels that are on your side, that God has sent to protect you, to watch over you, to minister unto you, and to deliver you. Because it's a spiritual warfare. And they're fighting against Satan and his angels. 
Satan and the demons and the devils that are warring against you. You know, I've thought many times that the greatest torment that a person could ever go through is that which pertains to torment of the soul and that which comes through the thoughts. Satan can torment by the thoughts because he is a spirit and he is the prince of the powers of the air against the elements, against the atoms. And he's in the atoms and he is able to interject, to project thoughts even into the mind of a Christian. And he will project thoughts into your mind at times just like he projected thoughts into Jesus' mind when the Bible says that Jesus was in a time of temptation and Satan came to him and he says, If thou be the Son of God, then command this, these stones to be made bread. Then cast yourself down from this, if thou be the Son of God. You see how Satan can interject thoughts into your mind? Thoughts to cause despondency, call, thoughts to cause doubt, thoughts to cause despair. But Jesus rose up and he says, Satan, it is also written, Get thee hence, Satan, for thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. And so we, we fight against that by speaking the word of God. Now, look at this. After David had received the answer, he says, now I love the Lord because he hath heard my voice and my supplications, because he hath inclined his ear unto me. Therefore will I call upon him as long as I live. The sorrows of death compassed me and the pains of hell got hold upon me. I found trouble and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. And then he says, I will now walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I believe and therefore have I spoken. Oh, friend, you know, I knew a man, an evangelist, a number of years ago, and this evangelist calls into the service of God in a time of warfare. And he, from the time that God had saved him, had recently saved him, and he had given his heart to the Lord, and he had cleansed him from his sin, and he was filled with the Spirit of God. And he was at this time in, of a war, and he was in a cattle car. They had packed the soldiers into cattle cars and they were sending them across France to the battlefront. And as he was in there, he was continuously speaking the word of God, continuously testifying, continuously preaching the gospel. And he preached to all the men that were packed into that cattle car as they were going to the battlefront. And then there was an officer that was in the next cattle car with soldiers next to them, and they heard him preaching as they were going down the railroad tracks. And when they stopped for a rest, then they called upon him, and they says, will you come into our car and preach for us? He says, we heard you preaching, and so he switched from one to the other and preached to him, always doing the work of God. And then he found himself on a hill with a with a, a with a gun crew that he was with a machine gun crew and he had been separated from all their other soldiers and all the american soldiers had been separated from them and all night long they watched the enemy soldiers as they walked marched down the hill down in front of them down at the face of the hill and he told his officer the lieutenant he says sir he said, says, I'm going to pray. They knew that in the morning when the sun rose, they would be sitting ducks. And he says, I'm going to pray that God will send a fog in the morning that they won't be able to see us. And he prayed and, he, and he, the morning came and he said the thaw, fog was so thick it was like pea soup. And it lasted till afternoon. And when the sun finally break, broke through and they were able to see there was not one enemy soldier in sight. God delivered them. Praise God. And friends, I'm going to tell you something. The Bible says this, Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. He did it for David. He did it for many soldiers in time of warfare and in time of battle. And he'll do it for you. Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. May God bless you.